Chang here, coming to you live from Simha Yoga Lab in Jersey City, New Jersey. Please visit my website, simhayoga.com, for the full streaming and regular schedule, as well as all my information on Venmo and PayPal. Uh, my Venmo account is Simha Yoga Lab, and the four-digit ID code is 8096, if you're prompted for it. Um, classes are $10, and if you're having a difficult time right now, $5 is fine, do the best you can, I really appreciate it. Um, the classes are live streamed through Facebook, and it's then saved on the, safe, uh, the Facebook library for a few days, I leave it on for probably about a week or so, and then I upload the videos to YouTube, and YouTube it sits there um, permanently because it is my channel. And the channel is Simha Yoga Lab. So please visit um, either my Facebook, Simha Yoga with Stephen Chang, or my YouTube, uh, Simha Yoga Lab, for the videos. Um, it is there for you to practice at your time. Right? You don't always have to follow my schedule on the streaming times. Uh, that's the beauty of having that on YouTube. Um, the quality is also quite nice on YouTube, so take a look. Um, for those of you who have tighter hips, Please sit up and elevate, sitting up on a block will help you relieve some of that tightness to your lower back. Um, you want to sit up tall whenever you're sitting up. Um, this class is basics, uh, we're working with um, the fundamentals of the yoga practice, um, keeping it a little bit simpler so that for those of you who are a little bit newer to the practice, it is not too fast, it's a lot more accessible. Those of you working with special conditions or um, pain to injuries, please be uh, particularly mindful. If I'm doing something that is not um, productive for you and makes you feel uncomfortable or you feel some discomfort, uh, make sure you pull back, um, modify if you know how to, if not, just kind of pull back and hang on to a pose until, um, uh, and just kind of back off until we move on to the next thing. Okay, so do the best you can. Since we're not with each other, it's very difficult to work around those limitations, right? Unless you know what you're doing. So um, please visit me, right? When, we, when everything gets back to normal, we'll have um, a live class again in studio, and then I'll give you pointers at that time. All right, palms face up. Fingers come together, we'll draw a thumb and index fingers touching. Let the shoulders broaden as you ground evenly through your seat. And let your inhales even out with your exhales. And through the breath, let the mind start to quiet. Sabahya, Bihyendraha, Bihyendraha, 
Sachi, Sachi. Starting to open the eyes and let the palms face up. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, right ear to the right shoulder, right to the left side, elongating through the left side of the neck. Chin toward the right shoulder. Release back to center, drop the right hand, left ear to the left shoulder, left hand to the right side. Chin toward the left shoulder. Release back to center, drop the left hand, chin toward the chest. Big circles with the head in one direction, ear to one side, roll it back, opposite side, roll the center. A few more rounds at your own pace. And back to center again. Pause. Opposite direction. And back to center again. Lift the chin parallel to the floor and lift your spine. Coming off your blocks. Extend the legs forward, separating the feet. Turn your toes toward each other. And then roll out. Draw in. Roll out. Draw in outer rotation, circling. Back to center, switch around. And back to center again, cross your shins, opposite shin on top. Take the arms up high, extend, twist to the right. Back to center again, twist your left. Back to center, side bends, right hand down, left arm overhead. Back up again, other side. Back to center, legs forward, forward fold. Soles of feet together, knees apart, and draw the heels in. So press the feet, uh, the soles of feet firmly toward each other, right? And then I like to even pull the toes back a little bit in a flex toe position. That engages your feet to press toward each other. Grab the ankles and draw the heels in closer. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. On the exhale, press your elbows to your inner thighs if you can, and start to lean forward for the forward fold. So the elbows pressing down will give you more hip opening. Take back up again, slide the legs slightly forward, and then lift the soles of feet, pivot to your heels. Separating your feet a little bit wider than the hips with hands back behind you for support, and then windshield wiper, your knees side to side. And then take it back to center again, take the feet together, knees together, and swing it back behind you for down dog. So move around a little bit again, just to loosen things up. All right, take it back to stillness in your down dog. Hands are about shoulders width, fingers are wide spread. You want to press into your fingers, your finger um, knuckles and the pads of the hands and be light on your wrists. Press through your fingers to shift the weight back toward the heels. Now, if you can, fully extend the legs and the heels are reaching down, but the heels don't actually touch all the way down. You always want a little bit of space. Now, if it helps you to go back a little, a little bit tight, you can bend your knees a little bit and just reach back through your seat. All right, come back to your down dog, raising your right leg up, three-legged dog. Step the right foot forward between your hands. Ground the back heel down and rise up for warrior one. So, checking your alignment. Right toes point straight forward, which means the inside of the foot is parallel to the side of the back. 
Line of the right knee, directly over the right heel, vertical line. So now your legs are strong. Now your back foot is too close, right? And your stance is too short, and you can draw your knee too far forward like this comfortably. That means your stance is too short. You don't have a lot of power when you're standing in this warrior pose when your knees are like this. So you want to step the foot further back. Get a wider stance so that when you bend your right knee, and you get to about 97%, right? So not to your fullest extension. Once you get to your fullest extension, you just feel too tight. Give yourself a little bit of room to kind of move around. So you want the right knee to be directly over the heel, ground to the back heel down. Now if your ankles are tight, you might want to turn the toes outwards a little bit. And that will make it a lot more comfortable for your ankles. And full extension of the back leg, so your legs are nice and strong. Then square the hips forward. Raise your arms up. Your torso and your arms are about vertical to the floor. This is your warrior one. Legs are strong. Open it up, warrior two. Notice the legs are basically the same position. It is only the rotation of the spine and your torso rotating to the left. Arms are parallel. Fingertips are reaching opposite direction. This is your warrior two. Reverse warrior. Hands to the floor. Right foot stepping back. Palms flat and lower all the way down to the belly. Hands alongside the rib cage. Press your hands down. Lift the head and the upper back. So your belly and your lower ribs are still on the floor. Draw the elbows back, which helps you broaden your chest and then maybe even feeling like you're pulling your shoulders back slightly. So that engages your upper back, helps you lift in your baby cobra. Press into your hands, lift up a little higher. So now your belly and your lower ribs are away, are away from the floor, possibly. Or just a little higher, right? Maybe you don't have a lot of backbending um, um, abilities, right? So it doesn't have to be that high. Then if you have even more, full extension if you have it. If you don't have full extension with your arms, maybe your elbows are slightly bent. As long as you're at the highest level at this point. This is your cobra pose. Alright, bend the elbows, take it all the way back down, and child's pose. Press into your hands, lift the torso, lift your seat, and then take the seat toward the heels as you fold. Then start to roll back up to your hands and knees. Tuck the toes under, lift the right knee out, pendulate back to center. Lift the right knee out, pendulate back to center. Lift the right knee out. Stay here, flex your right foot. Draw the right knee back behind you onto your left side. Look past your left shoulder to see if you can see the right foot. Square back to center, take the right knee down, then take the same thing to the other side. Lift the left knee. Open up to left seat, knee to the side, pendulate back to center. Open up the knee, pendulate back to center. Open up the knee, stay there, flex your left foot. Draw the left heel back behind you, look over your right shoulder. Can you see your heel? Square back, release your left knee back down, and then down dog. Pedal out the legs. Come back to stillness. Again, press strongly into your fingers, finger knuckles, and the pads of the hands, and go as light as you can on your wrists. And then you're using the rest of your hands, right, strongly to help you support in this pose. Heels are reaching down toward the floor, but they don't actually touch. Slight bending of the knees if you need it for the hamstrings in your lower back. Just press into your hands and draw the back toward the heels. All right, on the inhale, raise your left leg up, three-legged dog. Step the left foot forward. Warrior one, ground the back heel, so realign again. Left toes point straight forward, which means the inside of the foot parallel to the side of the back. Bend the front knee over the heel. Have a wide enough stance so that you feel strong through your legs. Ground the back heel down at an angle, turn the right toes a little further out if you need it. Full extension of the back leg. Square the hips and torso as far forward as you can, just look straight forward. Torso, arms are about vertical to the floor. Warrior one. The legs don't change that much in position, it is all in the torso. Warrior two. 
Check again. Can you see the inside of the foot? If your knee goes over to the right, uh, right side, make sure you take it back to the left so that you can see the inside of the foot. Flip the front palm, reverse warrior, left arm up and back, stretch your left side, and then hands to the floor, left foot stepping back, lower all the way down to the belly, hands alongside the rib cage again. The three progressive cobras. Inhale, lift up, baby cobra, lower ribs, belly uh, to the floor, draw the elbows back, broadening your chest, engaging the upper back. Press into the floor, lift up a little higher. It might be just incrementally, just a little bit, or about halfway up. Press into your hands, go as high as you can. Ujjangasana, Cobra. And take it all the way back down. Child's pose. Take it back up to hands and knees, tucking the toes under. This time, left heel first, okay? Inhale, left heel up, draw the left knee in. Left heel up, left knee in. Left heel out, stay there, bend your left knee, reach back with your right hand, grab the foot, and kick back. Now, if you can grab the foot, fantastic. If you cannot, then keep your left heel reaching back or reach your right arm forward. Alright, let's release second side. Back to hands and knees, toes tucked. Kick the right heel back. Right knee in toward the nose. Kick the right heel back. Right knee in toward the nose. Kick the right heel back, stay there. Bend your right knee, reach your left hand, grab the foot, and kick back. Begin to release, take the right knee back down, and then lift the knees down. Back. Inhale, right heel up. Right knee toward the nose, that's round the spine. Shoulders over your wrists, high on your left tiptoe, round the spine, knee toward the nose. Kick the right heel up again, three like a dot. Step the right foot forward, warrior one, so watch for alignment again. Right toes forward, knee over the heel, ground the back heel down, full extension, square off. Raise the arms high. Then extend the arms forward. Take the right hand to your left shoulder. Left hand to your right elbow. Pulling here to get stretched into your right shoulder. All right, keep the legs strong. All right, as we hold this warrior, you're actually strengthening the legs. So if you press your right heel down strongly and the front knee lunging forward, and a few more breaths, you're really going to feel the action of the legs, right? As we take a stretch of the shoulders. Reach your right hand forward, flip the palms, raise your right arm up, bend your right elbow. With your left hand again, pull gently back in space. So now you're opening up the underside of your shoulder joint. And then also your right ribs as well. Alright, so by now your quads should feel a lot of um, action here. Alright, release warrior one. Open it up, warrior two. Lengthen out the right leg. Triangle pose. Tip the left hip back, reach your right hand forward. Take the right hand to top of shin if you're less flexible. Of course, if you're a little more flexible, you can slide your hand further down, right? Now, if you are ready to take the right hand all the way down, then you can take the right hand all the way down. Left arm up. This is your triangle. Inhale, take it all the way up. Reverse triangle, right arm up and back. Then bend the front knee side angle. Right elbow to the top of the right leg. If you can touch all the way down, then take the right hand down, left arm up. Take it all the way back up, reverse warrior. Hands to the floor, right foot stepping back plank. Inhale, breath, exhale, lower all the way down to the belly. This time, um, 
Sphinx pose. Walk your hands slightly forward, lift the upper torso, draw the elbows down. So you want your shoulder, your forearms to be about shoulders width. So if you want to grab opposite elbows just to feel what that should be, then take the arms to parallel each other. Then you want to check vertical line with your left upper arm. Alright, so you want a 90 degree angle here. Do the same with your right. Once you set your arms and shoulders, press your belly and your lower ribs down. That will give you a lengthening of the lower back. Then resist with your, with your forearms pressing down to lift your chest. So now it's a nice deep mid-back bend here. Because your belly and your ribs are lift, uh, pressing down, but you're pressing your forearms to lift your chest. So you're isolating the back bend. Three more breaths here. And begin to release, draw the elbows out, walk your hands back in. Child's pose. Taking a seat toward the heels and fold. Take it back to your down dog, walk your hands back forward, tuck your toes, lift the knees. Inhale, left heel up, three leg dog, left knee in toward the nose, the ground, shoulders over your wrists, high up on your right tiptoes. Kick it back up, three leg dog, step the left forward, warrior one. Back heel down, arms up high, check your alignment, left toes point straight forward, knee over the heel. Ground the back heels, squaring on the hips, arms up, warrior one. Take the arms forward, left hand to your right shoulder, right hand to your left elbow. Pull it here to stretch out your left shoulder, left arm. Keep the legs nice and strong here in your warrior. Reach your left hand forward, flip the palm, raise your left arm up and back. With your right hand, pull gently back in space. Come back to neutral, raise your arms up high, warrior one. Open it up, warrior two. Lengthen on the left leg, triangle. Tip the right hip slightly back in space and reach your left arm further forward. Hand to top of shin, stop there. If you have a little bit more on you, slide with your left hand down. If this is good enough, stay there. If you can take your left hand all the way down, that is your triangle. Right arm reaching up. Now, if you feel, you can go wider with your knees, walk it out a little wider. 
So now you're working on outer rotation with your hips for hip opening. Right? If you feel you have more, your heels are pressing downwards. Three more breaths.
as you press your left heel down toward the floor, you're reaching the crown of the head and the fingers up toward the sky. Pressing your right foot to the inner left leg, so you go above the, below the knee joint. Then you also want to think about the right knee rotating back in space. So you're spreading open the front of the hips. Alright, let's break. Raise the arms up, draw the right knee forward, step the right foot down chair. Exhale, dive forward, fingertips to floor, bend the knees and step the left foot back, crescent room, left knee comes down. For those of you with sensitive knees and you need padding, take your blanket or your towels, otherwise you can go directly to the floor, walk your hands, cut the thighs and then lunge forward. Alright, so as you lunge forward, you're getting the stretch into your quads. You want to line up the right knee off the right heel. Let's stay here today and just work on the hips moving forward with the support of the hands to your thighs. So let's just isolate the um, depth of the pose, everything below the belly. So there's very little activity or concentration to the upper body. I want you to just look internally and feel for every exhale, how you deepen into the lunge by moving and sinking into the pose, and how much more extension you're getting to the quads, how much more openness you're getting into the hips. Two more breaths. Alright, half split. Take the hands to the floor, to either side of the right foot, tuck the back toes behind you, and then start to lift and shift your hips over your left knee. So I want a pretty vertical line here with your left thigh. Flex your right foot, relengthen with your spine as you support with your fingers, and then on the exhale, beginning to draw forward. So try not to immediately round the spine, right? I want you to think about that extension of the spine and keeping that extension as you take it forward. Step the right foot back down. Keep the left hand to the floor. Untuck the back toe. Raise your right arm up to twist. Right hand behind you. Stay here. Release. Take the right arm back up. Hands to frame your right foot. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, and ground the heel, preparing for warrior two. Take it all the way back up, warrior two. Reverse warrior, half moon. So if you have, if you do not have a block, the hand comes forward about a foot, a little off to the right side, so you're going to diagonal. If you do have a block or a water bottle, uh, hand about a foot forward, a little off to the right side, so it's the same measurement. Tip forward. And balancing. I like to keep the gaze looking down to the floor to check my balance. Stack your hands, shoulders, and hips. Raise your left arm up. I want you to nice and steady. If you feel you want to start to look upwards, go ahead. Start to finish up. Bend your right knee and step it all the way back. Warrior two. Reverse warrior. Exhale, hands to the floor. The right foot stepping back plank. Lower all the way down to the belly. Reach your fingertips back, reach your toes back. Lift up, Shalabhasana Locust. Alongside the rib cage, tuck the toes under, press back up into a plank, and then down, down. Stepping the right foot forward, low lunge, left foot forward, standing forward again. With your hands supporting, heel toe your feet again, about max width distance. Alright, then this time, bending both knees and press your elbow, right elbow, to the inside of the right knee. 
right hand to inside the left knee. So you want to squeeze your knees toward each other so your quads are activated. Your right arm is acting as a point of resistance. Then the knees are bent. Then raise your left arm out and up into a half bind and twist deeper. Keep your thighs squeezing toward each other. Release, take it back up, left hand down, right hand down. Lengthen out both legs, sway out the hips side to side. Take it back to center, bend both knees again. Left arm to inside the left knee, left hand to inside the right knee. Squeeze your thighs toward each other, left forearm is your resistance, right arm up and behind you, half bind and twist deeper. Raise your right arm back up, right hand to the floor, release both hands, sway out the hips side to side. And then again, with both hands supporting, bend at the knees, take the thighs about parallel to the floor, lift the upper back, and reach the arms forward. Swing the arms alongside, swing the arms forward. Swim the arms alongside, swim the arms forward, swim alongside, swim forward, lift the torso up about 45 degrees, then reach your hands forward again at an angle, take your hands together in prayer and reach. Then as you start to lift the upper torso some more, lengthen out the legs, reach your hands, forward, up and back, slide back bend. Come back up, bend your right elbow, left hand to your right elbow, side bend to your left. Take it back to center, re-extend, bend your left elbow, side bend to the right. Back to center again, hands together in prayer. Step the right foot in towards center, step the left foot towards center. Tree pose, stepping on the right foot, pick up the left knee, open up the knee to the side, grab for that foot, take it to your left leg. So above and below the knee joint, then arms up and out in a wide position. Keep the gaze at a fixed point to help you to balance. So I like to take the gaze slightly forward from me, and then to the floor. Start to take the arms back up, left knee forward, step the left foot down, chair. Exhale, dive forward, fingertips to the floor, bend the knees and step that right foot back. For crescent moon, right knee comes down to the floor. Or to a blanket if you need it. Walk your hands, cover the thighs, and then actively lunge forward. Feel the stretch of the quad. And then left knee over the left heel to a, a vertical line with the left shin the best you can. Then apply pressure with the hands and cover the thighs, and as you lean the torso back, the belly draws away from the thighs. Gently looking up. So again, as you sink into the pose, you're looking for the openness of the hips. Two more breaths. All right, we have split, hands to the floor. Tuck the right toes under. Then as you start to shift the hips back, um, flex your left foot, you want to line up the right hip with the right knee. Hands support to either side. Relax it on the inhale, stir your spine. Now also think about not lifting the head, but instead a neutral spine, which means you're actually looking downward slightly. 
then lean forward with that stretch to your left hamstrings and your lower back. This is your half split. Step that left back down. Right hand to the floor. Left arm up, half bind, twist. Release, hands back to the floor, supporting with the hands, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, ground it down, and circle it up into warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, half moon. If you don't have a block, hands forward about a foot, we'll both turn the left side. If you have a block, take it, or a water bottle. Now to come into the pose easier, you can step the right foot in. Then, as you shift your right tiptoes, now we have more leverage and balance to help you come into the full expression of the pose. Stack the right side of your left, right arm up. Right. Keep the gaze to the floor or look upwards toward the sky, whatever helps you, and whatever your ch um, challenges you, makes you feel good in the pose. Start to break. Step the right foot all the way back from warrior two. Reverse warrior. Hands to the floor. Left foot stepping back. And then lower all the way down to the belly. Bend your knees, reach back, grab your feet. On the inhale, lift. Or if you want to just come up to a standing vision here, 
Look over the left shoulder for a rotation. Come back, look over the right shoulder for rotation. Come back. All right, let's break. Walk your hands back forward. Tuck the back toes and press into your hands and lift the left shin off the floor. Walk your back to your down dog. All right, second side. Raise your right leg up. Right knee toward the nose and land the shin to the floor. So again, point it right toe position here on top of the right shin. Right knee angles out 30 to 45 degrees and the right thigh goes with it. Inch your left knee as far back as you can. Walk your hands back, elongate through the spine. Make sure you're nice and level and very balanced here. Then start to walk the hands forward. Forearms down. Hands as pillows, resting the forehead, whatever you like. You have a bit, about 15 breaths here. Alright, if you feel a lot of tightness in the hips, this is a great one. Gives you a lot of space. 
so that you can keep that lengthiness of the spine as you rotate through that central axis. Take it back to center, come to a twist to the right. Center again, extend both legs forward. Hands supporting to either side as you slide the hands out. That is actually supporting your torso to draw down, right? It really is so helpful to take the hands and slide them out quickly. Alright, keep your left arm out, left knee comes in, preparing for the twist, and then twist by rolling to outer right leg, outer right hip. So you're rotating to the right. Take that center, switch legs, switch arms. So right arm out, right knee in toward the chest, and twist to the left. And then back to center again, hug both knees in. Step the feet to the floor, slide the legs forward, let the toes turn out, arms long side of the body, palms face up, and let it all go for Shavasana, fight a relaxation. Begin to take your breath back in. And start to move the fingers and the toes. Reaching the arms overhead, stretching in opposite directions. And then rolling over to the right side and come up to a comfortable cross leg position. Reconnecting to an even seat, a lengthy spine. Let the shoulders be broad, the breath deep, and the neck free. Inhale for a
Please share with your friends and let people know this is happening so that we can get a great community going. Um, so my um, Facebook streams, um, my classes um, on schedule, and then they get saved on the library um, under videos. And then in YouTube, um, which is Simba Yoga Lab, um, the videos are on there permanently. So uh, all the information is on there. Take a look, and I hope to see you guys soon. Be well. Take care.